It always comes to this. back again to do another tattoo progress update today where i last left off i showed off uh uh the new work that rick and i had done on my arm here i did these like weird connection points so some of that is healed well mostly healed and uh, their parts are still um, actively in the kind of tougher like scalier kind of scabby period where they're just about to start to flake it's been uh, two two and a half days since the session so more or less on time as i often say i heal very very quickly there's been no pain in that in any of those spots for days um to further illustrate my point obviously i had another session you probably already see and you probably well obviously you can tell from the thumbnail um on my forehead here and my chest i'll get into both of those individually in their due time um, my forehead has got no pain and my chest has no pain. There's no sensitivity to the touch. That was literally 12 hours ago we finished. Maybe a little more than 12 hours ago. I think it's probably 15 hours ago. But, like, I could literally be slapping this right now. There's no pain. There's there's no open wound there. There's nothing. There's, it's... I, I got into this in my last video, but my body has really just gotten used to the process of this. And like I said, um, Lily Lou and I talked about this, and uh, Lily Lou's assertion was that it's most likely a mental thing, but I think that there's definitely a physical component to this because my chest piece and my forehead both feel healed already. They're not healed, and people have a, a, a funny like definition of what healed means. Some people will tell you it's like far longer than others. Um, so for me, what healed means is the first layer of skin has sloughed off and the tattoo is really no longer open to infection or um, any kind of contamination. I don't think of healed as three to six months down the road. That's settled. There is a difference between those two words and some people are, they're, they're confusing them. And uh, to be honest with you guys, a tattoo doesn't change much between a week and three or four months it just doesn't it will be more or less what what it is it will maybe dull out a little and that's the same thing with anything over black as well there's some school of thought that anything you do over black is just going to continue mixing with the black and it's going to be nothing there or something none of that is true there's nothing like that that's like whatever you have after the peel it will be that and a little duller like any other color tattoo it's not some magical like mixing process like all of that basically happens within the first week i, I see it mostly happens in the first couple of days um whatever the black is going to do to the color it's done by the time it's peeled for the most part it's a lot duller than what you put in when it's fresh because uh, you can only get so much color into skin in one session. This is why even um, even in negative space, I would definitely recommend a second pass on almost every color tattoo that's ever been done. And you can like how it looks, but it will be better if you commit to another pass. Uh, that's just reality. You don't you don't get to argue about that either. Every single color tattoo that's ever been done would benefit from a second pass. So, like like I said, there's going to be people out there with, like, color tattoos, and they're like, oh, my color looks great. And it's like, yeah, it could look better and more solid if you do more. That's just a reality. Most people, they don't want to do that because they just want to do one and dones, and that's fine. If it looks good enough, that's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the quality, the saturation point of the ink can only get to such a level with one pass our skin can only take so much at a time that's why if you already have a certain color in there um, when you're putting a different color in there it probably will take more than one pass to change the color which brings me quite well to my next point as you can see these tips 
Um, we actually took out one of them on each side, and I actually like that a little bit better. But the tips that were um, still pretty pink, they are mostly opaque now. They, they've been covered now with two passes of opaque gray, smoke, silver um, in particular. And there's still some like burst blood vessels over here. For example, this one was more pink yesterday than it is today. So I'm anticipating that this one will get basically to that same point. And again, we've done the same thing as what I did with the roses on my head, where these were bright red and they were covered with opaque. And then you can come in and um, you can brighten them up with white later if you want, but opaque being a good neutralizing agent, you can take a color tattoo and basically turn it black and gray, especially if you're proficient with them. And uh, Rick has gotten into some of this opaque, like cover up territory where you use all different tones of uh, grays and you can almost do a black and gray tattoo. But it's complicated stuff and this is really just the basics of it. I'm not talking about anything high level here when I'm talking about turning color gray. That's very, very simple stuff. That's that's just basic saturation. We're talking about like opaque cover-ups. So that's a whole other thing because you have to know how each of those opaques is going to look just slightly different in the skin. And then you're using them to create a gradient of black and gray. And then, yeah, it just gets a lot more complex. And there's, there's more art to that. But there's also a whole lot more like scientific stuff in there. Um, just... No, and also knowing how each skin is going to look at a different skin tone too. You get people asking me about skin tone cover-ups quite often. And I think that they're very doable. And I've seen some artists do them. Especially for like little things. But you have to really understand how each tone is going to interact with a person's skin. Anyway... Um, I had more thoughts on my mind this morning. I thought this was going to go in a completely different direction, but I'll save that for another video, being that we're this far in already and I still haven't talked about much of the tattoo. So, the forehead came at the end, and I knew I would need a second pass on the forehead. It looked good. There will be a lot of people who would have never done a second pass on it. Again, I'm not one of those people. I like to make sure that my work is bulletproof, and from there, you can't really discredit the... Um, the actual quality of it you can you can dislike the art of it but I want it to be solid and there were a few spots in the black that were a little touchy and uh, uh, the, the outline was a bit fuzzier than I wanted and some of the opaque wasn't solid in through here you really couldn't see this little ball in here that is uh, put in there that's actually covering red as well so just some things that needed some polishing and then the chest piece got a full rework, basically. Well, more or less the same color palette, but just put in. And um, there were some things that bothered me about one side to the other. Um, let's just show it off here. Um, one side had a yellow belly to the, the belly of the tentacles for some reason, and the other side had red one. And I like the red more, and I think it works better with everything else anyway. So... Um, and then we redid the blue over here. There's some more blue tones through here. Less green. Gave it more of a blue and red kind of vibe. Uh, redid the eyes again because, as I mentioned, when you're covering one color with another color, it, it will probably take two passes to assert the new color's dominance. And these eyes had like a silvery blue to them. Now they're like straight up yellow. Same thing with the, the outside of it that was done in more of an orange and we want them more red so we did the red again um it's still mixing with the orange a bit and so it's got more of an orangey red but it's definitely more red than orange now so i can live with that and if we need to hit them again then that's totally fine um i should mention this was the probably the biggest in terms of saturation this is probably the biggest session i've ever had on my chest uh, that sounds crazy, but you have to keep in mind that all of this is done with small mags. All of this was relined, and there's so much little shit going on in here that this chest piece, just doing the tentacles again and some of the touch-ups in here, um, took around four and a half hours because there's just so much shit going on that 
You wouldn't even consider at a glance. Sometimes, I, I say this often, but a body of work is so much more than the sum of its parts, right? And what, uh, what you see with this chess piece does not read the intricacy of it. There's so many different colors. Um, it's just, it's a lot. There's a lot going on in there that doesn't necessarily register to the, the untrained eye. This was not just something that you could just pound like mag shading into like 27 mag colors. Um, I've had people sending me that Anthony Black color on tat color on black tattoo still continuously. He did another one, a big white and black on black one. And it's good work. And like he quotes like a, a certain amount of hours, like um, eight and a half hours for the white and black on black sleeve, uh, four hours for the color tattoo he did. And I've had people like, is that legit? Like, there's no way it's, it's, of course it's legit. Like it's, it's actually, I could see it being done even faster. And I've, I've said this a lot on the Remy reacts, but when you do these big, um, these big bold tattoos that don't have a whole ton of detail in them, it's mostly just like big mag work. You can cut through that shit pretty quick. You have to slow down a bit because you're saturating color into black and that's just going to take longer. And he may have a, a diminished uh, result um, going that fast. I, I can't say on the, the white on black one. I, I would assume it's going to be fine, but it is, it's pretty quick for this realm. But when you're using giant mags, you can cut through things really fast. And once you wrap your mind around this, it's no different than any other color tattoo. And that goes for white and black on black as well. It's just, it's just saturation. So the only difference is that he's probably moving a little slower than he would be over negative space. But everything that is said there is easily doable. It's just that a lot of, uh, like, for example, with this sleeve, you couldn't do this in eight and a half hours. I'm not even saying that you would want to. I'm just saying that you couldn't. You could not do it. You could not do it anywhere near that fast. Different styles of tattoos take a lot different amount of time. And that should intuit, but to the average consumer, it doesn't. Most people will go, but I want that one in the same amount of time as that one. We, we have this problem here at the shop a lot where it's like people don't respect the amount of work that goes into something. They'll just see it and go, well, it's only this big. And it's like, yeah, but it's fucking, there's a lot in there. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot of fucking fuck around and you can't just pack that shit solid. So that slows you down. You get into the weeds on little things. Um, and that's, again, what my chess piece is. There's a lot of little things. Anything that Rick lays out is a lot of little things. A lot of little liners, a lot of little fucking mag groupings. And you get slow coverage. You get crazy detail. You can even see the difference in how Terry laid out these leaves. See this? They're big. They're bold. They kind of sprawl. And then... Rick originally laid out the neck and you can see all of these little lines and all those little lines keep you from, and the black shading up to there keeps you from getting in there with a giant mag and just wreaking havoc. You have to take your time, you know, and everything Rick has laid out. Anytime I've had any artist work on anything that Rick has laid out or work even around they're like, holy shit, there's so much deep. Like, it's just too much almost. It's like, you know, Terry's Terry likes detail, but not not to the extent that Rick does. So, um, yeah, <laughs> some things take a lot more time than others to, to make a long story short. Anyway, um, I am very happy with how the chess piece looks now. The only part of it that I still think could maybe use some more is the brain, but I don't even know how to do that. I don't know how to go about that because the the brain is solid saturation. It's not lacking for saturation. It is, it's everything it needs to be. It's just that I think being in the deep well of uh, of red velvet and being this pinky tone, even with the blue and black in there, it's too close to the background for it to be um, the shining element that I would like it to be. There are some things that I could consider to change that. I could build more black around here and rather than a halo, I could have like just black over here meeting up to the rose and that would probably give it more clarity and, and uh, you know, more, put it more in the foreground, but that'll be a thought that I think about for a while before I consider 
because I do like how everything is sitting right now. It's just that the brain is a little bit more camouflaged than I would necessarily like. With that said, uh, yeah, it was a good session. And uh, I'm going to be working on my, either my back or my right arm again with Terry next week, depending on whether the lines are healed up. They're a bit itchy today, so, you know, but just when you just do lines, sometimes you can get back onto things sooner, and I do heal quick. So in the event that uh, I, I can, I will be working on my back piece next week, so you can expect an update on that either next week or the following week. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day.